What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Young Black. Uh, just wanted to make a quick video. Let you guys know. I purchased a couple um, new things yesterday in the evening, right before GameStop closed. Um, I, I believe in my, my last video, I said, well, I told you guys I was going to be getting this. Um, Spider-Man, Edge of Time. Um, I didn't really buy this for me. I bought this for my son because he likes, he loves Shattered Dimensions. And I love Shattered Dimensions too. That's the best Spider-Man game I ever played. Um, I haven't gotten into this yet. I haven't started playing it yet. Um, but it's really good. I didn't do an unboxing for it because it wasn't really for me. It was for my son. So I didn't want to, if it was for me, I would have waited and unboxed it online with you guys. But he was too antsy. He wanted to play it right away. And I wasn't going to do an unboxing in the middle of the evening. My wife was chilling, watching TV, you know, doing our normal thing. But um, for one, yeah, I, I, this game is getting mixed reviews. You know, which means, to me, it's kind of controversial. I mean, it's made by B-Notch. Right? Yeah, it's made by the same guys who made Shattered Dimensions. So I'm like, I don't think they messed this up. I mean, I think everybody's just comparing it to their first work with Spider-Man, um, Shattered Dimensions. And they're, they're looking too too um more, too more much into it. You know, I think they B-Notch is the perfect company to um do these Spider-Man games. They've done them the best out of all the Spider-Man games I ever played. I mean, story-wise, I mean, they haven't made one that's an open world yet, where you can just swing through the city and do that type. They haven't done that yet with um, Shattered Dimensions or this game. So they haven't really been put to the test to really make Spider-Man be able to play around in his normal environment, his home environment, which would be the city, you know, the skylines, swinging and everything. I mean, they have quick time events in the last game that take place in, this, in the city, but it's nothing that you can really control yourself and you know, have that open world feeling like most people are used to when they think of a Spider-Man game, you know, because he gets to run around the whole New York City. Um, but for what those games did, Shattered Dimensions did that for storyline. I mean, it really is like how you, when you read a Spider-Man comic and you get that feeling, you know, that epic feeling of, of what Spider-Man's doing in the comics, it comes across perfectly in these games that B-Nox is making. So to me, I'd rather have that. Because the, the swinging around the city and all that is cool, but you get over it. It gets stale eventually, especially when you're just saving the same guy who's falling off the roof over and over and over again in the, the last Spider-Man game I play. I mean, how many people is going to be falling off the roof? You know what I mean? Or, or construction guys um, falling off the edge of a roof and Spider-Man has to save them and take them to a safe zone and lay them and put them down. I mean, it's, it was the same type of events over and over and over again. But it was still fun because it was still Spider-Man. You know, but it got stale after a while. This game is not... These games are not like that. They don't get stale because they don't do repetitive stuff like that to make it feel like an open world. So they don't have that pressure on them. They just have to make story, you know, and make it feel like a Spider-Man story, which is not hard to do, but, I mean, to get it perfectly is, is kind of difficult, though, you know, because there are certain complexities to Spider-Man that is kind of hard to come across. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard for them... You know, for, for a, a, a game company to, I don't know, to make it come across correctly. It's just, Spider-Man is just one of those characters. He's not like Batman that's just hard and stern. You know, Spider-Man has a, 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 a flexible personality. Sometimes he can be hard and stern and serious. And then sometimes he can be the funniest fucking superhero you ever heard. I mean, he has some of the most catchiest one-liners and things like that. He's, he has a silver tongue. He really, really does. And they do that very well. In um, Shattered Dimensions. Now, I heard in this game, since you only got two Spider-Men in it, you got um, Miguel O'Hara and um, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2099. I heard the banter be between them is freaking and hilariously funny. You know? And if you don't know, I've, been, I've read Spider-Man com comic books a lot when I was younger. I haven't read any lately, but I, I know both of these characters very well. Peter Parker especially, because he's the main Spider-Man we all know and love. But um, Miguel O'Hara, I know him pretty well, too, his character. Um, he's actually Spanish, if I'm not mistaken. I think he, he's of Spanish descent, so he's the Spanish Spider-Man, basically. Which I think is freaking cool, you know, to have a, a Spider-Man that's a different race. You know, that that's freaking awesome. And he's not like Peter Parker, per se. Like, he tries to stay out of trouble. He, um, Peter Parker takes on his powers as, like, having a responsibility. He feels like because he has these powers, he should help people. It's his responsibility because nobody else can do what he does. 
So if something is happening, he feels like it's his responsibility to help because he's in a position where um, if something crazy is happening, only he can help. Only his abilities could really help or, or cause something to stop that's really, really dramatic. So he's he has to step up all the time. Um, Spider-Man 2099 is not like that. Okay, he doesn't... He likes having his powers, but to a certain extent, he kind of considers them to be a curse because he's not that um, superhero diving headfirst type of dude. Miguel O'Hara, he's not that type of dude. So sometimes he, he kind of regrets his powers and wishes that he could just lean back and just chill and not have to have so much pressure on him to do these superhero things. But just like... um. Just like um, Peter, though, deep in him, he feels like it is his responsibility, though. But he doesn't, he doesn't approach it the same way Peter Parker does. He, you see in him that it's kind of more of a chore for him to be a superhero. And I like that because it shows the difference between both characters. I was watching a video for this game, and they had a part where um, Miguel and Peter were talking to each other. And um, Miguel was saying something to Peter along the lines of, um, don't stick your neck out, you know, too more than you have to or whatever. And Peter was telling him, well, I do what needs to be done. He was like, he was like, you should too, you know, or, or you might as well not even call yourself Spider-Man, you know, as Peter making mention that he basically is the original Spider-Man. But um, to Miguel, that's not true. He's the only Spider-Man he's ever known. So, you know, they, they both feel like they're the original. But to be honest, neither one of them are. Neither one of them are. There are multiple universes of Spider-Man which they've shown in the comic books and they just recently did in Shattered Dimensions. So there's multiple Spider-Man characters. And there's th and Marvel's been known to do this a lot. There's multiple versions of all the X-Men characters too, you know, which is really cool because it keeps it fresh, you know, but it does get kind of confusing at times trying to keep up with all of it. X-Men, Ultimate X-Men, Uncanny X-Men. It gets confusing trying to keep up with all that shit all the time, you know, but it is very creative, so it gives you a fresh spin on new on old characters, but they give them... A fresh spin with new different type of storylines, you know. So it gives them it gives them room to play around. Uh, but I'm gonna play this game a, a little bit. I'm not gonna try and beat it straight through. My man, straight up review. I was watching his videos. Um, I just say my man. I don't know straight up personally or nothing like that. But he's a cool dude. I like his videos. And dudes always be ragging on him and shit. I mean, I I respect his reviews. I mean, he might get stuff wrong. He might mess up some words or whatever. But at least he's original, you know. He's not trying to be like everybody else. Like I see, he be he be beefing with dudes like Big Tune and all that type of shit. But I've seen those characters before. My like these people, like I don't understand. It's like they they imitating other things. They're not really being themselves. Like I, I've seen um these fucking wannabe rapper dudes, all type of shit like that. There's a million of y'all. I mean, straight up as being himself, and that's what I respect about him. So whenever, whenever he makes a mistake or whatever, it's okay. Because he has a passion for games, and I can respect that. And at least he's doing it his way. You know, you got to give a man respect for that. You know, that he's not trying to be a clone. You know, not trying to not trying to um, imitate or, or live out an image that's being presented to him through music or whatever. He's doing what he likes, and I can respect that. You know, I might not be into devil rock or what is it, devil rap or whatever that shit is called. But if that's what he wants to do, more power to him. That's his, that's his fucking thing, yo. Whatever. Yeah, you know I mean, people need to stop hating on people, you know, and, and, and just start respecting people for who they are. You know, fuck all that other bullshit. It's nonsense. But um, besides all that, I just had to get that out real quick. You know, I do my little quick rant, my little banter or whatever. Um, I don't think this is a a a a, a think about. I think if you're a Spider-Man fan or a comic book fan, this is a game worth buying. Just because B Knox, they they always come through. So far, I mean, Shattered, Shattered Dimensions was far and beyond what I thought it was going to be when I put it in. I thought it was going to be another Spider-Man game, and it was a lot more than that. I mean, it was a lot more. It was the real soul of what Spider-Man is supposed to be. So if you're a fan of Spider-Man, a fan of Marvel Comics, you read comic books or whatever, you like the movies, this right here is a buy if you're a video game player and a comic book and a Spider-Man fan. Uh, another thing I went out and got, because if you guys don't know, I mean, my last video was on Dark Souls. Uh, I went and picked up the strategy guide for Dark Souls. Now, first thing off about this book, it's freaking huge. And it's a hard, I mean, it's super hard cover. Like you, uh, it's, it's like a textbook for real. I mean, look at that shit. They tell you every single thing you want to know 
about the game. Weapons, um, maps for the area. And um, somebody was saying, oh, you bought the book. Um, you're cheating. You know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't be using the book. It's going to spoil the game. Dark Souls is not that type of game because of the way it's built. The game is so freaking difficult that even reading this stuff and them telling me what the um, characters I'm facing could do, like the bosses or, or the, the mid-boss characters, even though the book tells you what they can do, like their moves and things like that, you still have to be capable to um, dodge them and move. I mean, it doesn't tell you exactly how to get out of the way of somebody swinging a humongous great hammer or some shit. You know, it just lets you know that he does have a downward great hammer smash and you need to roll to the left or the right of it. Now, if you don't get the timing for the roll right, you're still going to die. So it really, it doesn't matter. The book doesn't spoil anything. The art, the I mean, the story points in this game aren't really big story plots or anything like that. So it's basically just a guide for me to be able to find items, you know, look at the mats and be able to find items. That's what I'm going to use it for so I can get stuff to help me survive a little easier. That's basically, I'm not going to be using it to try to, oh, okay, I got to fight this boss. Let me see what the book says about this boss. I'm not going to be using it like that. I mean, if I see it in the book and I say, okay, the boss is coming up, that's fine. But I'm not going to read and try to strategize through the strategy guide on how to beat the bosses. I'm not going to do that. Uh, game is freaking awesome. The book is freaking amazing. If you're playing this game, I suggest you go buy this book. Because it doesn't say it on the on the um, cover, but it is a, a limited press. They're not going to make many of these. And most GameStops are only getting like two copies a piece. So if you're even thinking about it, you better just go pick one up for 25 bucks. I mean, the manager at the store that I, that I um, shop at, he got one for free. And he's not even playing Dark Souls, so I just paid him 20 bucks. So I got mine tax free. I'd have to pay 27 bucks or whatever, $26. I paid 20 bucks. And he sold me his book that he got for free because he's a manager. He got he, They gave him a book. But, um, yeah, if you're thinking about picking this book up and you're playing Dark Souls, I suggest you do it. It's most definitely worth it. The game is very difficult. And any little bit of help you can get it, it is freaking awesome. I mean, I haven't used the book yet since I got it. I opened it, just been looking at it a lot. As you can see, I got fingerprints all over it because I've been touching it a lot, which I don't really give a fuck about. This book is going to get a lot of use. When I, when I start, um, when I sit down later today, probably, um, and really get into Dark Souls. Got a little, I got, because I got a little bit of a hangover. I was chilling with wifey last night, trying to watch some movies, watch that new Kevin Hart type shit. You know what I mean? Um, we got the new season of Weeds over here and shit. Just trying to do some cool stuff. Just chilling the house with wifey this weekend, you know? Just drinking some Paul Mason. Just trying to chill out and relax. You know, guys? Uh, just doing my normal thing. But yeah, go pick this book up. I mean, it has everything you want to know about the weapons, all types of stuff, you know, maps, uh, uh, what the, how to use the um, NPC characters, which is really something you need to know in, in um, Dark Souls because there, there's in, NPC characters that will trick you into releasing them and then they'll go kill everybody at the beginning of the game type of thing, you know, and then fuck you over to the point that you miss crazy items or... Or, or, or a type of weapon or something, or I even heard they can even put out bonfires in certain areas. So you want to know um, who these characters are because they can really cripple your gameplay if you if you don't. You know, I mean that's part of the game if you want to have it that open to you. But to me, after leveling leveling up and doing all this stuff, I don't want to be crippled by something I didn't even see fucking coming and that I could have I couldn't have possibly known. But I mean they do throw you hints. Because I don't, I don't remember if you remember um, the character Yurt from Demon Souls. He was the assassin character there that you had to kill. And when you, if you freed him and didn't kill him, he would go back and kill um, people in the Nexus. He was an assassin. And he was trapped. And then you free him. And then he goes back to the Nexus and kills some of the NPCs there. So I used to kill him immediately. So it was open. I used to kill him and take his armor, his weapons, all that good stuff. And you can do that in this game too. You can kill NPCs and take their weapons and their armor and stuff. But um, I wouldn't suggest doing it um, right now because we don't know the value of, um, at least I don't, and I don't know if you guys do, I don't know the value of all the NPCs in the game yet. So I don't want to just start slashing people because their armor looks cool just to take it. And then later on in the game, they could have gave me one of the most powerful weapons or one of the most powerful items in the game or something like that. But um, real gamers stand up. Um, I'll be back on here soon. i got to go pay for my Batman today. Um, real gamers stand up.